My name is Camille Goodison. I work with the Illinois Simulator Lab. This project uses inexpensive, low-risk radio control helicopters. Uh, some people call them drones. I'd like to really call them you know, toy helicopters because that's what they are, to shoot video from and then turn into panoramic photos. I guess taking panoramic photos is interesting to me just because I've lived in central Illinois for 20 years and you know often you'd like to be able to get to a viewpoint but there isn't a building that you can you know, get onto the roof of to take the photo from. I like to have the flexibility to put the camera wherever I want to. If you're going to make a still, it's a, a panorama is the obvious thing to do and if you want to make a panorama you do that from somewhere high up. So I wanted to see you know can we get good stills out of the very low quality video cameras that these things carry. The particular benefit here is that you're using something that costs less than $50 to produce you know, what you would really think would take a few thousand dollars of equipment to pull off this kind of photo. The first step is just picking where to stick the aircraft, weighing the risks, you know, what are the hazards, what rooftops might this thing get stuck on for a month. Once I'm flying and I've got the copter about where I think that the camera is looking, then I do a slow pirouette back and forth so that the camera has a chance to do its auto white balance, to do its automatic exposure, and try that from a few different points of view because you don't know exactly where the camera is looking. You don't have a live downlink. You want the camera to be in one place looking around. You don't want the camera to be moving around seeing it from different points of view. That's cubism. What these very small quadcopters have going for them for taking these panoramic photos, primarily it's risk. Um, Secondarily, I'd say that they're cheap and you don't have to be upset if they're damaged or if they try to damage something else, which they really can't. That's why I can be so cavalier about landing this thing. It just, you know, it can be upside down, it can be sideways, it can bounce and tumble a few times. It's too small to get hurt. But uh, risk is the biggie. This thing is basically as harmless as a frisbee. You know, this lets me fly in places that I otherwise wouldn't dare to. Once the copter's landed and uh, I take the little camera card out and stick it into the computer, then you know, I've got a video file that I can look at. With the final video, what I do is extract all these still frames out of that segment of video. This one shoots 60 frames a second, and I'm typically stitching between 100 and 250 photos together to make a panorama. The overall layout depends on the motion of the camera. If it's a nice calm day and I can just you know, do that, then you know you could get a nice rectangle out of that. If the camera was you know actually doing that, then you'll end up with something more of a distortion. There are several artifacts that uh, come because the camera is such low quality. The tools for cleaning up the photos. Uh, part of that is stuff I've written myself. Part of that is off the shelf. The extra steps clean up the individual images that will become the panorama. So the, the cleaning up happens before the actual stitching together. What I've done here is take you know, a wide array of software packages and you know, put them together into an easy to use set of tools and whichever ones you know, your particular situation needs, you can use that to turn you know, the raw video from one of these copters into a nice panoramic photo. Mm -hmm.